Hey y'all, good morning and happy Mother's Day to y'all. I'm so excited to show y'all some stuff that's been happening in the garden. Um, I'm on the Gulf Coast, my name's Rachel and this is zone 9A and uh, some roses have been popping and some forget-me-nots that I started from seed, I just threw them out. And I'm gonna show y'all what happened with the um, uh, black Eastern Black Swallowtail Caterpillar that I found the other day and uh, just some things that are growing in the garden. And also I got on the roof so I can show y'all uh, what it looks like from uh, a bird's eye view. So come along and see what's going on. I'm up on the roof getting an aerial view of the garden uh, just to see what it kind of looks like from the bird's eye view, the actual bird's eye view because see that dove right there in the bird feeder they like to sit up here and wait for me to leave the garden so they can eat so apparently this dove must think it feels pretty safe from me I can't get it while I'm up here and then when I come down there he'll come up here and wait on me to leave so he can eat again but um the uh I gotta, gotta show you this this passion flower vine is going a little crazy I am not allowed to leave this growing on the roof. Um, it's just provides a bridge for bugs and animals and all kinds of things. So I've got to cut it back and I'm just looking down here at the path from the kitchen window out to the circle garden. I'm so thankful. Oh, there is the dove. Scared him away. I'm so thankful that, um, I have discovered cayenne pepper and that that is going to keep the armadillos at bay. Uh, but anyway, it's a lovely evening. I'm enjoying getting this look. So this is what it looks like. It's gotten a little out of control. It's just May 3rd and I've got to cut back that rose. Let me zoom in so you can see how crazy it is. That is Cecile Bruner and it's as tall as the house. I'm still up on the roof of the house. I am standing on the roof of the sunroom and oh I hear a hummingbird having a fit down there at the salvia. Doesn't want to share. Uh, it's down there at that big salvia. I'm sure I can't show you because it's too far away. Oh yeah you can kind of see him right there in the middle. He does not want to share. But I wanted to get closer to this rose and show you that it is indeed as tall as the house because I'm standing on the roof and here it is level with me. Isn't that crazy? Cecile Bruner, y'all, it wants to live here in the south. Remember that Eastern Black Swallowtail Caterpillar that I found on the fennel? And it looked like uh, it, it looked like bird poop because there was like a little white spot in the center of it and it was black. Well, this is it now. It has completed another instar. That means it shed its skin and it's getting larger and larger. This is probably the second one because it's still really not that big. I'll put my finger down here so you can see its size. Yeah, oops, I'm disturbing it, uh-oh. Didn't mean to do that um, but it's little it's still little um, so if you find a caterpillar and you bring it in and you've left it on it the fennel or dill or whatever and it doesn't move for a while do not be worried because what they do when they shed their skin is they kind of make this little um, pad out of uh, uh, it looks like uh, it's clear and it's just it's kind of like I think it's their spit, but they make a little pad that they sit on so that they can wriggle out of their skin on it. So don't move them, leave them where they are and you'll see uh, that they will change. And uh, maybe even before your very eyes if you're watching them. I just showed you a video that I took of this uh, Eastern Black Swallowtail Caterpillar from three days ago. And this is now on Thursday. And look at the difference in the size compared to just a few days ago. I mean, he is really growing fast. And probably he may need only about maybe four more days of eating fennel 
before he's large enough to turn into a chrysalis. I've got him in a medium-sized rectangular critter keeper. If you want to buy one, I know they're on Amazon. You look it up, it's K-R-I-T-T-E-R -T -T -E and keeper. And uh, I got this one at Owl's Five and Dime for way cheaper than what they're selling them. I think I probably spent $15 on this. So it's wild. You can buy these on the island for cheaper than you can get from Amazon or even from Walmart. So here's the top. And it's really cool because, you know, if you wanted to go in there, you could open it like that. And there he is. And I'm going to close that up because I don't want him to escape. But um, this is the one that's got the chrysalis on the top of it. Uh, well, I can't open it now, but... If you want to start raising butterflies get you one of these so the eastern black swallowtail caterpillar that i found on april 29th is going to turn into a chrysalis probably today or tomorrow you can see he's attached himself to the fennel and he's going to turn into a chrysalis and this is how big he is compared to my finger and uh, so we'll be keeping an eye on him and I'll show him to you when he's a chrysalis. I wanted to show you this Emily Bronte rose. It's, I haven't really been impressed with Emily Bronte, but I think this is very lovely. This is like the first one that I thought, oh, I, um, I'm glad that I uh, planted that. You know, I, I think that's really pretty. It's got an interesting color to it. I don't know what these little, little bugs are on it, but um, um, I have been enjoying this bloom. And uh, so, and it's gotten huge. Let me show you how I'm gonna back up here so you can see how tall it is. It's happy right here for sure. And uh, it's got a little bit of black spot on it. Um, but I did, I cut it down to the ground, like, uh, well, close to the ground um, in February. I cut, I think you're only supposed to cut a third off of a rose bush but I cut two thirds because it was so affected by you know black spot and it was just scraggly it didn't have leaves so um, it's really bounced back and um, I'm gonna give it some more chances to do its thing and I'm just in love with gentle Hermione I mean in love with it I have two of them I need to cut the salvia back because I've got one over here, and then you can hardly see the other gentle Hermione. It's right here with this uh, salvia growing all over it. Here's a, here's a bud right here. But I gotta save it because I love the way it looks. I just, it is so, it smells amazing. And I've got my little birdie spa going, <laughs> the bird bath with the bird petals. I mean the uh, rose petals. Um, it was so cute. Um, I wish I could. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but she was like, "Hey, it's a bird bath of bird spa." So yes, that's what they they can come and get a soothing soak, be pampered in the bird bath. It was Christy that called it a bird spa. Isn't that just the cutest thing? Yes. They are going to be pampered right here. And I have this new plant. I uh, I don't, uh, I, I threw these seeds out, but I don't know what it is. I thought that it was going to be, um, well, I knew, it, I thought it was going to be blue, but uh, now I got to find out what it is um, because uh, I thought it would be like forget-me-nots, but I've never seen forget-me-nots in person. So let me look it up and I'll tell you. Well, I thought they were supposed to be forget-me-nots. They don't, they don't look like what I think forget-me-nots look like when I see pictures. I mean, look like the leaves are kind of funny. I took a picture of it and I put it in an app and they said it was called something bug loss or something. So maybe I got the wrong kind of seeds. I'm not sure, but um, I am enjoying it. I, and you know what? The armadillo has not. The armadillo hasn't done anything to it, so I'm very thankful to even have it. But um, I'm gonna uh, just keep an eye on it. I didn't realize when I planted these for get me nots that there were two different kinds in this front package here. So they are for get me nots, but one is called Mysotis 
sylvetica and the other one is cyanoglossum amabile and then this of course is cyanoglossum blue i don't think this one came up the ones that i have are the two from the other package so there are some small plants growing underneath and then i've got these these which because i've never grown forget-me-nots before so they're coming up back here i threw these seeds back here behind the hydrangeas so i've got the lemon balm kind of hedge and then hydrangeas that are going to be pink and then um the forget-me-nots behind it so that's kind of cool if when it flowers out and hopefully they'll all be able to flower together that would be really pretty combination I just had to like uh, cut back the lemon balm a little bit because it was starting to crowd out this coleus so I had coleus here last year and it grew huge I mean like huge it overgrew the hydrangeas so I'm hoping that it will grow maybe a little bit more even and we'll have you know pink hydrangeas the pink and green coleus the uh, forget-me-not in the back and uh, it'll fill in nicely but I'll keep y'all up to date on it I feel like I've got a kind of secret garden growing back here on the back side of uh, the flower bed because you can't see them um, they're blocked from by the uh, agastache in the front but you can see this view from the guest bedroom and I'm really loving the combination of this Mexican bush sage here and then this must be salvia amistad and then I've got this uh, sun patient pink sun patient the artemisia an actual black and blue salvia and then another sun patient and a Mexican bush sage and then it's got a background of the agastache right here Ooh, mosquito trying to bite me um, and then of course I'm letting things grow up the dead plum tree so all these colors are coming together and just making me so happy and then I've got um, hyacinth bean vine climbing up and uh, it smells so good and this is the secret garden from the other direction and you can see all the agastache has grown it's about four and a half feet tall so it's going to be really cool when um the uh, morning glories and the let's see what else is this variegated ivy and also i have some wisteria that's really taken off in the plum tree and uh, oh and i have a blueberry bush over here that's actually got blueberries growing on it i'll show you that it's kind of hard to get through here now <laughs> But um, here are the blueberries. They're kind of pink right now, but look at that. We'll have a snack for later. Since these things are just growing up so thickly through here, I'm gonna come and rescue this grass and probably rescue this licorice plant. It's not gonna get much sun. So I'm gonna, I've also got, um, a coleus under there that needs to be rescued too and I may end up rescuing that lobelia I planted some um, seeds of some blue butterfly pea down here at the base of the plum tree and it looks like they're gonna grow so I'm gonna have so many different cool colors of vines growing on this dead plum tree I'm still in the middle of rescuing some things I used to have some uh, salvia right here and right there and I pulled it out because it had kind of this moldy stuff on it so I'm rescued some of these sun patients from another part of the garden and I put them in there and I'm going to put some pintas from another spot too that uh, has uh, it's getting overgrown so I planted out all those uh, native plants into the circle garden and the cayenne pepper is working y'all i have not had an armadillo attack in the past several days and uh, i'm so thankful for that i ordered some cayenne pepper in bulk and i'm going to um, keep a perimeter of cayenne pepper around the yard look at these 
of these roses are those not incredible those are the big mama roses and uh, I have some uh, video that I'm going to show y'all from earlier this week about some of these plants but yesterday in the evening I just came out here and planted this stuff up you can probably not even tell but um, all the spots where you see brown spots I think I'm gonna go today and look for some coleus and I'm gonna plug the coleus into these brown spots because I love coleus it brings a lot of color to the garden and uh, it's super easy to grow it wants to live here on the Gulf Coast and I used to think that coleus could only live in um, areas with uh, uh, shade but no I mean they can stand the Sun which is really exciting so I'm gonna get some different variegated coleus and plug them into these holes and they will want to live here I got to show y'all something cool look at this bugle weed isn't that pretty it's blooming so I want more of that it's a ground cover this is my first uh, experience with it I'm gonna get it and plant it between the stones there may I, I don't know I don't know if it's um, considered to be invasive or not but um, really I don't care I'm going to plant it between the stones and if it starts to get away from me I'll rip it out but uh, it's just looking so pretty and I'm gonna show y'all the corn later on Oh, I wanted to show you one of the rosemary's did die and so I replaced it with this basil it looks like it's got a kind of mounding form to it I've never grown this kind before so yes one rosemary has kicked the bucket already another thing I did I killed that um, Texas sage it was where this grass is and I rescued this grass from somewhere else the um, Texas sage just uh, didn't want to live <laughs> It took one look around. I was like, uh, I'm not in Texas anymore. I don't like this. I wanted to show you all the corn. It is as tall as I am. And uh, we planted it on March 5th. So um, for us, that's, I guess, the most epic time to uh, grow corn. Um, I did get a couple of worms on it, and I sprayed them off with water. And then um, I did have to get some, like, uh, that blue dawn and I sprayed a little bit of that on the worms and I haven't seen them since so uh, this is the optimal time to grow corn down here in uh, Baldwin County I wanted to show you that I'm growing these this corn in pots um, just because uh, it's easier for me <laughs> to do and um, I, I planted some um, blue butterfly pea when I planted the corn and I've done that before a couple of years ago and some of it uh, germinated and some of it I, I thought well that was a waste of seed but it just recently germinated which is so weird because I planted it March 5th so I just saw some other seeds that are popping so um, it's exciting because what happens is when the corn uh, after I've harvested the corn um, the uh, and I don't need you know it to grow anymore well then the butterfly pea comes along and it grows up the stalks and it just just covers it up and it's going to turn it into this big blue fountain of butterfly pea so I, I'm excited to show you all that I hope it will turn out the way it did uh, in the years past Thank y'all so much for watching my video today and um, I've really enjoyed getting to share it with you. I hope y'all have an awesome Mother's Day and I can't wait to find out what y'all are doing in your gardens. Have a great week y'all. Thanks.
Look at this weird beetle who's taking a bath in the bird bath. I don't know what it is. I'm going to find out.